Hey everyone, so I'm back. Uh, this time in this lovely big hangar at Cape Town Airport and this is where I'm going to be putting the airplane together. In true airport fashion there's a noisy airplane out the front, it's a PC-12 as it turns out, making a lot of racket. Uh, we've got a couple of choppers in here at the moment but uh, other than that reasonably empty and here's some of the slings sitting out the back there, we've got the wings Oh, that thing's a parachute actually, and a few other bits and pieces. Um, no fuselage at this point, and I've got to unpack all the boxes, get all the tools out, try and see if we can find where the hour meter is, plug all that in. So today, first day, I just arrived in here yesterday, today is sort everything out day. So let's see how we unfold. I've only got six, maybe seven weeks to go, and this thing has either got to be flying or really close to it. Um, I leave here on the 30th of October, so that's it. Anyway, we'll see how we go. So I thought you might be interested in what you get with a BRS parachute for those who don't know what a BRS parachute is. It's the parachute for the complete airplane. So that sits in the back and you can pull a handle on the panel if everything turns to custard, pops out a big parachute and the plane floats down. Um, for those who have not used the BRS parachute, but the other brand, the Magnum, um, this looks considerably different. So this is what you get when you get a kit to um, have the BRS parachute. The BRS um, chute, which is packed away neatly in here, comes in its own um, container that sits in here. Rocket sits in under here and mounts on that. This, this whole thing sits vertically in the back of the aeroplane and this handle sits in the panel so when you pull that it pulls a lanyard which pulls a bit out of the bottom of the rocket and then the rocket fires out when the rocket fires it uh, pulls out this way gathers up a bit of speed hits the outer skin of the airplane which is designed to come loose that comes out that pulls these cables out of, or the lanyards out of here and then the whole parachute gets pulled out of this bag and then this is attached to the, the main wire ropes that attach to the airplane which rips its way out and supports the airplane. So anyway that's what it looks like, a little bit different from the Magnum one. It's also a little bit smaller. Uh, the rocket itself comes like this, it's all disassembled. So that's the housing of the rocket which, whoops, that's fallen on the floor. That sits in here which is this way around when it's mounted. This cable tie is just temporary for shipping. And that is the explosive and it's not packed in the rocket housing it's not particularly dangerous I'm told. This thing here which I threw on the floor is called an Ortman key and that's the base this is the base of the rocket here which goes in the bottom once the explosives in and then this Ortman key goes into the little slot here and then you wind it around inside and it, and it holds this hole it holds this ceiling assembly into the bottom. <coughs> oh, bit of noise coming here, I suspect there's something going on over there by that helicopter. The uh, Robinson R is something, 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 something. Um, anyway, so that's that's basically how it comes with the instructions on how to assemble all that. Handle, interesting, quite a, uh, it's a small, neat little package, so uh, interesting times. We'll see how that goes as we put it together. Well, we'll just stop here. As it turns out, Sling uh, emitted the launch tube, so that's not how it comes complete. There's some missing, but we'll hear more about that in the future. But thanks to Bryn for that information. He gave me that. He's a dealer in Auckland, and he's given me a good heads up on this sort of stuff, so uh, very, very good. i oh, just taken delivery of this thing. So here it is in its home for the next little while. Um, I think that blue's come out really nice actually. So uh, I think Glenn will be pretty happy with that. Inside is, we also had sprayed. And this is a, a textured paint. It's got kind of like a suede sort of feel to it. Um, apparently it's used in airliners. Um, I like it actually, it's quite something a little bit different. And uh, apparently it's difficult to get things to stick to it. So that's okay, don't need to do that. Um, 
we've done away with the lights up here that stick out that you can bang your head on when you get in and out and they're going to be in here or mountain here um, that's interesting I'll have to see where that is but um, all in all I think it's come up really nice so plenty to do well it's Sunday now and there's a little bit of movement in the hangar they're obviously going to take the 412 for fly and uh, this is the fun part of how you do a pre-flight on a 412 oh, that's scary up that high We also took the opportunity for a quick lunch out at Stellenbosch Airfield. Lovely day out there and quite busy. Okay, so I'm about two days into it now. Um, unfortunately, the hour meter there, uh, we've had a blackout in the hangar for some stupid reason and um, unfortunately the go-to guy doesn't seem that interested in sorting it out in the weekend. So hopefully we'll have that sorted tomorrow. Aeroplane's sitting there. Um, tail's now on. In order to get the fin on for its final shot, the elevator needs to go on. So that's all now um, installed and torqued. Now, it's interesting getting this connected to the push rod, which is actually down inside there, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Um, oh yeah, that big tube there that you see going across, that's the, the elevator push rod, which you probably can't see moving, even though I'm moving it. But on the end of it, there's a rod end that screws in and then that has to connect onto a uh, bell crank that's, that's on here. Pretty impossible to get the thing on. Would have been a lot easier if the instructions told you to, to put the, um, the rod end onto the bell crank before you installed it. Fortunately, if you undo it and push it forward, you can get to in, you can get to in that horrible little space in there with the fin not on. So got all that sorted out, fortunately, but there were certainly easier ways of doing it than what they mentioned in the instructions, but that's no real surprise. Um, what else have we done? There's Harry over there waiting in the background with nothing to do. So we've put the um, ballistic chute into, the, into here and bolted it in. Um, and then we're still waiting for, we, we didn't get the launch tube, didn't come with the parachute, which was a bit of a mistake. So we've bolted that in. Now there's 21 3 8 inch bolts holding this frame in here and it's only really intended to stop it jumping up and down when you're flying along so that's insane it's a, an incredible amount of fastness for that job um, especially considering that the parachute itself where most of the weight is is only held in in this canvas bag with one bolt right at the bottom so to have 21 bolts holding just the aluminium case and that with one bolt Seems a bit nuts, uh, excuse the pun. Now there was a couple of alignment issues with some of the holes um, on the bottom of one side and there's one just in here, which I can't, can't really show you because I can't get around there, I don't think. Um, oh, can we? One, one just there and, and one here and they didn't line up. So obviously it was a manufacturing fault somewhere either with Sling or BRS. Um, can't say which but one of those but anyway 21 screws was crazy so to uh, miss out a couple that didn't line up well not really a big deal these cables I've got to put some foam in underneath it so at the moment they're just temporarily wrapped around now when you wind them around they want to spring out and that pushes this out of the way which is not ideal so at the moment I've got cable ties squeezing them across and I'm just kind of hoping that in time that'll actually set a little bit better. Um, but either way, the cable ties will hold it in place even when it is installed. And um, I just don't want so much load in that if you hit turbulence, they open up um, or let go. But of course, you know, if the parachute was up and the whole airplane's weight was on it, there's certainly no restriction. Those cable ties will just pop off, no real problem at all. So no issue there. Um, what else have we done inside? Harry's done a great job of cleaning it up because it was full of all of the spoils of painting. So that's all sitting ready to go. Um, up the other end, I've got the handle for the parachute just sitting in here. Um, just We didn't have a bolt that came to install that. That's actually a lot of parts we didn't get with the kit. 
um, to install that. So that's just sitting there waiting to go. Lots of things that just need tidying up. And I do need to run a couple of extra wires here and there. I've put the switches in on the panel up the top here. And because they took the canopy, the canopy doors back off to paint it, which um, I didn't know that that was what was required. Otherwise, I wouldn't have put them on in the first place because I had to take the covers that I'd glued on off in order to get to the screws. So we've got to do all that in reverse. Haven't got the doors from the painters yet, but hopefully they'll turn up tomorrow being Monday. And that is pretty much where we're at. There's a big mess over the back there, um, which I'll get to as we put the doors on. Oh, we have put the antenna on the top and the antenna's on the bottom. So we've got the second comm antenna sitting on the bottom there and the transponder, which I don't know if you can see it. Oh, there it is. Um, the white one um, and that is pretty much what we've done and ever since so it's Sunday now I got here Thursday and didn't do anything there so it's basically Friday Saturday and, and today and we had a trip out to Stellenbosch Airfield for lunch so all in all we're happy campers done a reasonable amount of progress so from Cape Town International and some very noisy helicopters and my helper over there who's leaving tomorrow for a bit See you next time.